reading from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, 21, and 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. In the margin of my King James translation, uh, it reads, My words are medicine to all their flesh. So God's word is medicine to all our flesh. So therefore, I just want to read from the word of God and give you God's medicine. First of all, from Matthew, the uh, sixth chapter, the ninth through the tenth verse. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Healing is God's will. There is no sickness in heaven, the Bible said, so it's God's will that there be no sickness on earth. Then 3 John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Then again, 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 14th and 15th verses. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. And then Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Romans 8 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Romans 8, 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Deuteronomy 7.15 And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee. Exodus 15.26 If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none or permit none of these diseases upon thee, which I have permitted upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jeremiah thirty seventeen. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers. Leviticus 26, chapter the third verse, and then the ninth verse. If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them, I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. Isaiah 58, 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Genesis 20, 17. So Ab Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. 2 Chronicle chapter 30, verse 20. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. 
2 Kings chapter 20, verse 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Second Chronicles 6, 14. O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Second Chronicles, the 16th chapter, the ninth verse. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Job 37, 23. Touching the Almighty, he is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Psalm 67, 2, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Psalm 105, verse 37, he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Psalm 103, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Psalm 147, 3, he healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Psalm 23, 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Psalm 41, 3, The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Psalm 42, 11, Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Matthew 7, 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Then Isaiah shows us that healing is in the plan of redemption. Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Or the margin reads, Surely he hath borne our pains and carried our sicknesses. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Galatians 3.13 verse 14 and then verse 29 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Then Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, 13, and 14, and then chapter 2, verses 10 and 15. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, are able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. 
Ephesians 5.30 For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hosea chapter 13 verse 14 I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. In Exodus the 20th chapter and the 12th verse we read Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Deuteronomy 5.33 Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Deuteronomy 11.21 That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. 1 Chronicles 29, verse 28. And he, David, died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. Job 5, 26. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in in his season. Psalm 90, 10. The days of our years are threescore and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years. The 91st Psalm, verses 10 through 16. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 11. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Ecclesiastes 7.17 Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 22 Thou shalt not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And so you see, God has promised us long life, and he wants us to have long life. Now then, let's look at some scriptures concerning the earth walk of Jesus and his ministry. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Matthew the 8th chapter, the 2nd and 3rd verse. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 10, and then verse 13. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. 
The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servants do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 9, verses 20, 21, and 22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 36. And when Jesus departed, thence two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 12, verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 through 36. And when they were gone over, they came unto the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out to all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Matthew chapter 15, verse 29 through 31. And Jesus departed thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered, and when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 43. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had been dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him.
And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thy torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nine to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish it in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come, and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garments. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the rulers of the synagogue house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Then Mark the sixth chapter, verse 53 through 56. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, 
and ran through the whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but the border of his garment, and as many as touched him were made whole. Then uh, Mark the seventh chapter, verse 25 through 37. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But when Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. Then she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand up on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephrathah, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spake plain and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more the great deal they published it and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Then in Mark the ninth chapter, the 17th through the 29th verse, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft time it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thy dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, inasmuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? He said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Then in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21, And he cometh to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord." And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Then Luke the fourth chapter, verses 33 through 36, and then the fortieth verse and the forty-first verse. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. 
And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew he was Christ. Then in Luke, the sixth chapter, verses six through ten, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up, and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. Then in Luke the sixth chapter, the seventeenth through the nineteenth verse. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Then in Luke the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 17. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands upon her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, Lo, these eighteen years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then in John's Gospel, the fifth chapter, we shall read verses 2 through 14. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Then in John the ninth chapter, we shall read verses 1 through 7. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, 
Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is yet day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Then in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Then again, Matthew, the 10th chapter, the first verse. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. John, the 14th chapter, verses 12 through 15. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Acts the 6th chapter and the 8th verse. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Acts chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Acts chapter 9, verses 33 and 34. And there he found a certain man named Anus, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Anus, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, it shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Then Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, 
whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things or beings in heaven and things are beings in earth, and things are beings under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 through 23. Here Paul says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named not only in this world but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Then in John, the 16th chapter, verses 23 and 24, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Again, Mark the 16th chapter, the 15th through the 18th verses. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any dead to think, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Notice, in my name, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. John Gospel, the 14th chapter, verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever shall ask, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, Acts the 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 16. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power, our holiness, we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate 
when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised up from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name, through faith in his name. Now notice that. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. As they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against him. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Then Matthew eighteen nineteen. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things ever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Romans chapter 4, verse 17, and then verses 19 through 21. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So then faith cometh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Then 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Romans 8, 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Philippians 2, 13. For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do his good pleasure. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Romans six fourteen. For sin, or Satan, shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Then... Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew eight sixteen. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. John chapter 1, verse 1, and then verse 14. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John fifteen seven, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Psalm 107, verse 20, He sent His Word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Isaiah fifty five eleven, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14, 15, and 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, or the margin reads, let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeding of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 10.23, let us hold fast the profession, or again the margin reads the confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. That the communication of thy mouth may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Joel chapter 3 verse 10, Let the weak say, I am strong. I want to read Deuteronomy chapter 28, reading the entire chapter, and then Galatians chapter 3, also reading the entire chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning with verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, 
that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord will cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he is sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, or to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee over and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursed, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he hath consumed thee from off the land, where thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the bots of Egypt and with the emrods and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no night or no might in thy hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore bots that cannot be healed. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. 
Thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, where the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out on the field, shall gather but little in, for the locusts shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor eat the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast its fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and the fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters which the Lord thy God has given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children which he shall leave so that he shall not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he had nothing left him in the siege, and in the straightness uh, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the, on the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness... And every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land where thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even to the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart and fading of eyes and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and thou shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. And at evening thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now then I want to read from Galatians chapter 3, beginning with the first verse and reading the whole chapter. Oh, foolish Galatians, 
Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us, From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, I want you to notice that according to these scriptures, and specifically Deuteronomy 28, chapter the 61st verse, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring or permit to be brought upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, there are a number of diseases that are listed here. But then he also adds every sickness. So therefore you can say, My sickness, whatever it is, cancer, tuberculosis, anemic, mental distress, whatever your sickness is, according to Deuteronomy 28, 61, my sickness is a curse of the law. Now notice Galatians 3, 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, here's what I want you to confess. I want you to say it over and over and over again to yourself. Say it out loud if you're by yourself. Say it quietly to yourself if someone else is with you. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61, my sickness, now name your sickness, cancer, tuberculosis, kidney trouble, liver trouble, whatever it is, is a curse of the law. 
But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I confess, I am redeemed from sickness and specify your sickness. In other words, I'll give you an illustration. We'll just call it cancer. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61, my sickness, cancer, is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, he's redeemed me from the curse of sickness. Therefore, I confess, I am redeemed from cancer. All right, we'll just say your trouble is a stomach ulcer. All right, say this then. My sickness or ulcer, stomach ulcer, is a curse of the law, according to Deuteronomy 28, 61. But according to Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I confess, I am redeemed from ulcers of the stomach. Now, say, for instance, your condition is a blood disease. You see, according to uh, Deuteronomy 28, chapter 61st verse, my blood disease is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I confess, I am redeemed from blood disease. I just gave that to you as an illustration. Whatever your sickness is, call it a curse of the law, confess it's a curse of the law, then confess Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I am redeemed from sickness and specify your sickness. Now, I want you to do that. I want you to listen to these two chapters, Galatians 3, Deuteronomy 28, over and over again, and then at every waking moment, all night long, all day long, continue to make the confession, therefore I am redeemed from and specify your sickness. For more information about Kenneth Hagen Ministries, call 1-888-283-2484 or visit our website at rhema.org or write Kenneth Hagen Ministries, P.O. Box 50126, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74150-0126. And in Canada, visit rhemacanada.org. 